The Lexus GS is a full-sized executive saloon often forgotten in a segment dominated by cars like the BMW 5 Series, the Mercedes E-Class or the Audi A6. Yet all of these have had to copy its groundbreaking hybrid technology, further refined in this fourth generation model. It's a car that's sharper both to look at and to drive as well as being safer and more practical. Plus, it's also on offer in conventional V6 petrol form at a more affordable price. This won't be the first model of its kind you think of in this sector, but include a GS in your deliberations and you might find it a tempting proposition. The full-sized executive saloon segment in the UK is dominated by four cars, and this Lexus's fourth generation GS isn't one of them. In the past, that's been a compelling reason for a small but loyal band of management level business buyers to choose it as they sought to make a discreet but distinctive statement amongst a sea of BMW 5 Series, Audi A6, Mercedes E-Class and Jaguar XF models in the company car park. Indeed, being different has always been what this car has been all about. Hence its 2006 introduction of the kind of pioneering petrol electric hybrid drivetrain that rivals have only just got around to matching. But match it they have, which has led to a thorough rethink of this car by the Japanese brand in fourth generation form. Now the most obvious improvement would have been to equip it with the kind of diesel engine that almost all European buyers in this segment seem to want. But that wasn't viable given that virtually all GS production is sold in America and Japan where there's almost no interest in fueling from the black pump. What Lexus could do was to uh, improve the efficiency and practicality of the GS 450H hybrid variant, add a more affordably priced conventional GS250 petrol V6 entry level model to draw new customers in and improve the appeal of both models with sharper handling, smarter looks and higher technology. The result is this fourth generation GS launched here in the summer of 2012. It'll be a rare choice, but might it not be a rather clever one? Let's find out. Now, when you've reached the point in life where you, or more likely your company, can afford to spend 45 to 50,000 pounds on a luxury executive saloon, then you probably earn the right to splash out a bit on automotive gadgetry, of course, but also on performance. Something that shoots supercar style to 60 in less than uh, six seconds would be ideal, but also very politically incorrect. Asking your employees to switch off their screen savers at night, then parking a 3.5 litre V6 powered super saloon out in the company car park just isn't going to wash. Unless perhaps it's one of these, Lexus's GS450H. It's one of two GS models on sale here. The other GS250 variant is far more affordable with an ordinary, normally aspirated uh, 2.5 litre VVTi V6 petrol unit developing 207 brake horsepower. But the draw of hybrid technology is what brings most GS customers to this 450H model that I'm driving here. It's cleverness that can take an apparently planet-polluting, petrol-powered uh, executive saloon capable of uh, outsprinting a Porsche and weighing nearly two tonnes and make it deliver fuel and CO2 returns only fractionally less frugal than your local sales rep's petrol uh, 1.6 litre Mondeo. Now, Diesel rivals can do this too, but they cost more to fuel and to tax. They pump out more harmful NOx and hydrocarbon emissions into the air, and they lack the same whisper quietness that you get in this petrol electric GS. And that's why uh, the hybrid appeal has been so strong for thoughtful, eco-minded executives in recent times, and why Audi, BMW, Mercedes have had to play catch up in uh, this segment and develop this technology for themselves. Experience, though, counts for a lot, and here the Germans seem to be struggling. 
compared to a GS450H, a comparable Mercedes E300 Bluetech hybrid uses noisier diesel power and it's nothing like as fast. A uh, comparable Audi A6 hybrid uh, has a feeble four-cylinder engine with 40% less power uh, than this Lexus, yet still delivers the same fuel and CO2 returns. Well, even BMW's active hybrid 5 Series model uh, demands £2,000 more of you, uh, yet delivers 40 brake horsepower less. All of these competitors, of course, like Jaguar's XF, the other major player in this sector, sell mostly in conventional diesel form. But even the most refined of today's rumbly oil burners will seem hard to adjust to after an ownership period spent enjoying the sound of silence that is such a signature of GS450H ownership. Silence when you first begin and push the starter button. Silence when you ease through slow moving rush hour traffic, the engine only cutting in at speeds of above 25 miles an hour unless you have a particularly heavy right foot. Now uh, it's that combination of uh, battery and engine power that's typically used to drive this car. Um, all hybrids work like that but not all of them enable you to drive on all electric mode only, which is something that you can do in this Lexus. If you're just starting off in the morning and you want to stay all electric, then pressing this EV button down by the gear stick will keep you that way, providing you don't exceed that 25 mile an hour threshold and the engine is warmed up. That means that you can stay in all electric silence for as long as the battery charge holds out, which could be anything from a few hundred meters to as much as, well, just over half a mile. And once you are underway and the engine's cut in, then, uh, as with most hybrids, you've got the benefit that when uh, you're braking or when you're cruising, energy that would otherwise be simply lost uh, can be used to recharge the batteries so that they're uh, ready and waiting again for the next time you want to ease along in all electric silence. What all this cleverness creates is not only an environmentally minded executive saloon, but also a very powerful one that glides away from rest then storms onwards as if magnetically attracted to the horizon if you keep your right foot firmly planted. Uh, rest to 62, occupying just 5.9 seconds on the way to a necessarily limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. If you're going to drive like this, then you'll need to have selected the Sport Mode on the Drive Mode Select system that's a key part of this fourth generation GS model's more dynamic repertoire. Now this tweaks uh, both the throttle and the gearbox for more responsiveness and uh, introduces a red tinged hue to the instrument layout in front of you. At the opposite extreme, twisting the drive mode select knob to the left delivers an eco setting in which the um, engine output, the throttle settings and even the air conditioning are all controlled to maximise fuel economy. And to get you into a planet saving mood, the uh, backlighting on the dash changes to blue at the same time as rather neatly the left hand instrument dial switches from a rev counter to uh, what's called an eco meter. Now here you've got a needle that in normal driving hovers around the mid eco point but rises into the power sector if you're uh, using the engine to accelerate or will fall into charge if you're charging the batteries by off throttle cruising or braking. But what about when the road starts to twist and turn? Historically, to be frank, this is a car that has never rewarded the enthusiastic driver. And it still won't be first choice in this sector if that's your priority. But in fourth generation form, it can now satisfy if you specify it correctly in a way that no mainstream large Lexus model has ever been able to do before. Now the reasons why are found in these three letters, AVS, Adaptive Variable Suspension. It's a setup that you'll get only on the priciest version of this hybrid model, or probably more likely by specifying one of the GS variants in F-Sport form with their tweaked suspension and shock absorber setups. 
But what is AVS? Well, uh, it's a system that gives you an extra Sport Plus mode on the Drive Mode Select system that is able to uh, adapt the body control to the road that you're on and inject a bit more feel into the otherwise pretty lifeless power steering setup. Is it all enough to create in this car a fully fledged sports saloon? In the GS250 F Sport variant, I'd say not, thanks to that uh, steering system, the relatively heavy weight and the relatively low power from the 2.5 litre V6 engine. Though it's a unit that's still quick enough to get you from rest to 60 in 8.6 seconds on the way to a top speed of 144 miles an hour. In the GS450H F Sport Hybrid model though, things are a little different. Now the reason why is that this variant also gets LDH, that's the Lexus Dynamic Handling System. This improves grip and traction while reducing body roll thanks to an integrated four-wheel steering system, the first ever on any hybrid. Now four-wheel steering sees the rear wheels turn fractionally in the opposite direction to those at the fronts at low speeds. While when you uh, get faster, uh, it changes and the rear wheels turn fractionally in the same direction as the fronts to give greater stability at higher speeds. Now LDH is also able to uh, automatically adapt itself to the variable suspension and the active safety systems on board, uh, depending on the speed that you're going, uh, the road conditions that you're on and your driving style. The result is a car that can really match a hard-driven Audi or BMW over the tightest country road. And I never thought I'd hear myself saying that about a Lexus GS. This fourth generation GS is a more confident piece of styling than any of its predecessors, an approach emphasized by the neat spindle shape arrangement at the front uh, lower and upper grills, a kind of flattened hourglass design that's now a trademark for all of the brand's latest cars. The sleeker body is the same length as the previous generation model but slightly higher and wider and certainly more dynamic looking thanks to shorter front and rear overhangs. Specify your car right, maybe with the uh, glass flake paintwork or the metallic high definition finish and this Lexus can look really stunning. Obsessive attention to detail is in evidence everywhere, from these touch sensitive door handles to the even tighter panel gaps, but it's especially in evidence here at the rear, where the design narrows behind the flared wheel arches to emphasize the wider track. Now here you'll also find these neat little stabilizing aero fins on the LED light clusters and on this uh, GS450H hybrid model a rear bumper artfully styled to conceal the rear exhaust pipes. And inside, well interiors have always been a Lexus strong point and this one is no exception. Carefully crafted satin trim details, high quality stitching and lovely brushed aluminium highlights are all pleasing to the eye, as is this beautiful analogue clock crafted from a single ingot of metal. The shape of the long sweeping dashboard is enough to give driver and front seat passenger a real sense of roominess and the shape of the doors and the centre console makes you feel cocooned safely inside the cabin. The dashboard is divided into upper and lower zones, the upper zone housing the option of the largest multimedia display screen 12.3 inches that it's possible to buy in a production car and it's big enough to display two functions at once, satellite navigation info and uh, stereo information for example. You scroll around it via this click switch computer mouse type controller which uh, is part of the dashboard's lower operation zone where most of the main controls sit. Now uh, amongst these are the buttons for the clever S-Flow air conditioning system which is able to automatically close off the airflow to unoccupied seats therefore saving energy. It also releases uh, negatively charged ions wrapped in water molecules, so-called nanoparticles, which cleanse the cabin environment and even moisturize your skin. It's all part of a more 
driver focused cockpit and a more spacious one something you'll especially appreciate in the rear revised door openings mean that it's easier to get in and out and once inside there's much more head leg and knee room thanks to a redesigned seating layout and thinner front seat backs though this high transmission tunnel means that you won't want to be sat in the middle all well and good but what about boot space not to put too fine a point on it the trunk capacity of the previous generation GS in hybrid form at least was pathetic just 280 litres now thanks to a vertical relocation of the hybrid systems battery uh, in this fourth generation variant things are much better with 55 percent more space 465 litres available in total a figure that rises to 552 litres if you go for the more conventional GS250 model now you don't get uh, fold forward rear passenger seats so that you can extend it in this hybrid model but you do get useful side storage and a nice uh, fold down hook Though key options like an estate body style and a diesel engine are missing from the GS lineup, uh, much of that can be forgiven when you start to look at the competitive pricing proposition on offer. Now it'll help considerably here that you no longer have to stretch to 45 to 50 thousand pounds for the privilege of GS ownership. Though that price span still applies to the GS 450H that I've been driving here um, if you can be satisfied with the conventional V6 petrol engine of the entry-level GS 250 model then you could be looking at a starting figure of well over £10,000 less than that and that'll get you a car that'll give you silky smooth V6 petrol power for the price that rivals will charge you for something with four cylinders under the bonnet Talking of rivals, well if like most GS buyers you are looking at a petrol electric hybrid then bear in mind that of the competition on offer only BMW's petrol powered Active Hybrid 5 is really a direct competitor. It's around £2,000 more expensive and slightly less powerful. Audi's A6 hybrid is a four cylinder engine and it's about 40% less powerful while the Mercedes E300 Bluetech hybrid well that's a diesel it's also a lot less powerful now whichever competitor you stack up against this GS in whatever guise with whatever engine you'll find that it'll come off worse when it comes to a comparison of standard equipment you see all variants get an exhaustively long kit tally uh, that uh, runs from alloy wheels to biozenon headlamps, LED daytime running lights, front fog lamps, a colour rear parking camera, leather trim on the 10-way electrically adjustable seats, a 12-speaker uh, uh, CD stereo with a DAB digital radio built in and USB and AUX connectivity for portable music players. You get hill start assist to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions, cruise control and an electrically adjustable steering column plus dual zone climate control of course. My only criticism would be the lack of executive staple features on uh, the entry level GS250, things like metallic paint, power folding mirrors, rear parking sensors and satellite navigation that you'd really expect to find at that level. But of course all of these features are fitted as standard further up the range. The big question though with GS ownership is whether or not to have the AVS adaptive variable suspension system with its Sport Plus setting that gives you improved engine and gearbox response and better handling. Now I've opted to do without here, I don't think most Lexus owners want a sports saloon, but a high take up on the AVS equipped F Sport models in the range could very well prove me wrong. If you're shopping at the GS250 entry level point and you want to move from the mid-range luxury trim level that most customers choose to an F-Sport variant with the AVS system included, well you're looking at a premium of around £4,000. If on the other hand you're looking at uh, a luxury trimmed 
GS450H hybrid like the car I've got here and you want to progress to F Sport uh, level then you're looking at a premium of around £6,000. It's more in this case because the hybrids get the uh, LDH Lexus Dynamic handling uh, four wheel steer system that's tuned to work in concert with AVS. You also get the AVS four-wheel steering setup on the very priciest premier version of this GS450H, the only model in the lineup on which perhaps the most tempting option is fitted as standard. A 17 speaker, 835 watt Mark Levinson premium sound system. It comes complete with the largest multimedia display monitor ever fitted to a production car. It's 12.3 inches in size. And via that, you can monitor uh, everything from the energy flow of the hybrid system at any given moment to the enhanced HDD navigation system, which can tell you everything from traffic flow along your chosen route to local parking space information. It can even be set to guide you to a specific parking space at the end of your trip. Safety-wise, all the expected precautions are in place and it'll be reassuring for GS450H owners to learn that a study by the United States Highway Data Loss Institute uh, recently found that uh, owners of hybrid cars are around 25% uh, less likely to be injured in an accident than people driving a conventional motor vehicle. Now that's probably because of the hybrid system's greater weight. I should also point out though that the very same study found that the chances of being involved in an accident with a pedestrian are around 20% greater if you drive a hybrid, mainly because pedestrians on the pavement can't hear you coming. That gives you some idea of this car's superb low speed refinement. It's also why Lexus has uh, redesign the bumper and uh, the bonnet of this fourth generation GS to minimize pedestrian injuries. As for all the conventional stuff, well, as I've said, that's well covered. So there are no fewer than 10 airbags, twin front, side, curtain and knee bags, plus rear curtain airbags too. Plus, to ensure that hopefully you'll never have to use them, there's all the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control, all coordinated by an improved version of Lexus's VDIM, Vehicle Dynamics Integrated Management System, that also communicates with the adaptive suspension and the four-wheel steering systems where they've been fitted. Across the range, there's tire pressure monitoring and an emergency brake signal that flashes the brake lights in panic stops to warn following motorists. Most models also get a blind spot monitor built into the uh, wing mirrors that uh, stops you dangerously pulling out to overtake another driver. Plus, plusher variants come complete with auto high beam headlamps that can dip themselves at night in the face of oncoming traffic. To go further, you have to buy the priciest GS450H model, then pay a premium on top of that for the PCS pre-crash safety system. Now, this includes a monitor that scans the road ahead for potential collision risks, warns you if uh, it thinks there is one, then helps you to brake to avoid an accident. The PCS package also includes a lane keep assist system to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway, an adaptive cruise control system functional at any speed, and a driver monitor camera that constantly scans your face to detect for signs of drowsiness. If you have any qualms about the viability of hybrid technology, just look at the figures delivered by the GS450H that I'm driving here, about 20% better than those of the original version, which means that you can expect a combined cycle fuel economy showing of 46.3 miles to the gallon and a CO2 reading of 141 grams per kilometer. Now to put that into perspective, that's about the same kind of return you'd get from the kind of six cylinder diesel E-Class A6 5 Series or XF that would struggle to match this Lexus's performance, would be noisier, would pump out more harmful NOx and hydrocarbon emissions into the air and would run on pricier fuel. 
Sounds tempting, doesn't it? Though for owners, it'll be a pity that luxury hybrids like this one are no longer London congestion charge exempt. Still, the tax story elsewhere makes pretty good reading. This model qualifying in band F for uh, road tax and vehicle excise duty. It's true that you might struggle to match this GS450H's quoted returns in everyday motoring, but you can keep a pretty close monitor on how you're doing via a whole series of graphical layouts. Or you can just chill out and relax in Lexus's assurance that you're driving one of the most frugal cars of its kind. As for uh, the other factors you need to consider, uh, well, uh, those nickel metal hydride batteries, they're zero maintenance items guaranteed for 100,000 miles. Uh, insurance is group 42 and residual values not quite as good as the German competition but pretty nearly so. When it comes to the more conventional GS250 variant the reading isn't quite so rosy. Uh, here you can expect 31.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and a CO2 return of 207 grams per kilometre, figures that are some way behind those of comparable petrol engined executive saloon rivals. But then you are paying a lot less uh, up front than you would be for the GS450H hybrid and few competitors have the GS250 model's lovely V6 growl or high equipment quota. Insurance for this variant is Group 33 or 34 if you go for the F Sport model. This is a refreshing car in so many ways. Instead of directly copying its rivals in the full-sized executive saloon sector, Lexus continues to take a different approach with this fourth generation GS. You could ask why there's no diesel engine. But in doing so, you'd also have to answer the question as to why one might be needed, when in hybrid form, this model can rival the fuel and CO2 returns of any direct, comparably performing V6 diesel rival you care to name, and do so while uh, delivering greater refinement and less poisonous emissions from cheaper fuel. Of course, going the hybrid route with this Lexus is hardly inexpensive, hence the importance of the more conventional and much more affordable GS250 petrol V6 variant, a key stepping stone between the brand's compact IS and CT models and the plusher luxury hybrids further up the range. But if you can afford it, this GS450H hybrid is the version of this car you'll really want. And for once, perhaps, you'll get the support of your accountant in choosing such a premium purchase. Hybrids like this one aren't a total solution to the automotive pollution that we're inflicting on our planet. But the hybrid technology that this Lexus pioneered in its sector represents an important step forward that rivals are still struggling to match. Add in excellent equipment levels, famed reliability, and a dealer network that makes you feel special. And you can see why this car has attracted so many satisfied and high profile owners. If you're buying in this sector and you haven't owned a Lexus before, then you probably won't be considering it. Perhaps you should be. <laughs>